Welcome into the Cougar Tailgate, where BYU fandom lives. Here's your host, Lauren McClain. How's it going, everyone? We have another week of the NBA playoffs, which means some heated rivalries, and maybe they didn't start off as rivals, but when you're playing in a best-of-seven series, fans tend to intensify the matchup. Today, we're going to be talking about what it's like to be living in enemy territory, whether it's for college or professional sports. Later in the show, we're going to bring on some fans who are involved in some of the greatest collegiate rivalries in the country. But first, let's bring on a guy who knows all too well what it's like to be the lone Aggie amongst a bunch of Cougars, Ben Bagley. What's up, Ben? Lauren, how are you? I'm doing great, thank you. Good, I'm glad. I'm doing well, too. But, Ben, for some reason, you and I both love sports. It brings out the best and worst in people. We feel an intense connection and loyalty to the team we're we're cheering for for some reason. For example, I've been a Utah fan my whole life. I'm pretty sure I've watched uh, the Memphis Grizzlies play before the series zero times in my life. And yet all of a sudden I'm super annoyed with Dylan Brooks. And I feel almost a motherly <laughs> protectiveness when he's talking trash to the jazz players. Stupid. Yes. Irrational. Absolutely. But that's what sports can do to you. Ben, have you ever felt that way? About one of your teams. Yes, there's a guy by the name of Bill Romanowski. Many uh, NFL players or fans will know that name, 49er, Bronco, Raider. Uh, as a Bronco, I hated him. The dirtiest player, <laughs> man. That guy. I, wa- I, wished, I wished the worst possible painful injuries upon that guy when he wore b- orange and b- uh, blue. Then one off season, lo and behold, the Oakland Raiders signed Bill, my favorite <laughs> player ever. I love that guy. No one brought the intensity, the fire to the field like Bill Romanowski, the best player ever. And it's just kind of funny because, like, uh, th- this this week I-, I hear all these people talking about Dylan Brooks. I'm glad you brought it up because I was going to ask you about him. Oh, I hate that guy. Blah blah blah. I go. What if he's wearing a jazz uniform? I would love. It. Yeah, you would. Yes, you would. He'd be your favorite player. Isn't that interesting that we do that, though? It really, it's, it's this crazy and definitely irrational loyalty that we have for our teams. Where, where do you think that comes from, Ben? Well, I, I always joked around back, back uh, in my day when I had sports talk radio is, is, and I said this on the air, I go, look, I'm a rational person. I, I, I consider myself above average in intelligence. <laughs> but the moment, the moment I open my mouth and start talking about the then Oakland, now Las Vegas Raiders, I become 50% stupider because, yeah, rational thoughts out of my brain. Uh, just Everything's just tinted, slided. It's just it's, you're no longer a rational human being when you start speaking about your team. You become 50% dumber than you were when you started just having a normal conversation. <laughs> All fan, all loyal fans are dumb. It is true. <laughs> like I feel like I feel like the fair weathered fans are probably the most normal. Wouldn't you agree? Because they kind of have a, a a better perspective than those people that that follow the team really really closely. I just think fans are, fans are out of control. But that's what makes sports fun. And we're talking today about living in enemy territory. And Ben, so you went to Utah State. You're a big Aggies fan. You get a job in the heart of Cougar country, surrounded by not just BOU fans, but a bunch of BOU students. So what was that like for you when you first started working in Provo? Awkward. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've been I just here. told everyone your secret. Uh, yeah, and uh, don't hate me now. People are going to stop listening. They just tuned out. Nah, they won't, they won't. Uh, no, <laughs> I, yeah, I grew up in Cache Valley as, as a diehard Aggie fan. Hated BYU. Absolutely. Like, seriously, Bill Romanowski towards, Bill, t- towards BYU. I remember Ty Detmer wins the Heisman, and for some reason they brought him to Cache Valley to do a, 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 a like 4th of July parade in a small town, Richmond, by the way, home of Napoleon Dynamite, uh, <laughs> well, where a lot of it was filmed. And I'm like, Ty Detmer, you're bringing that guy to Cache Valley? What a true, like, it was an uproar. Like, how are you bringing a cougar to Cache Valley for this, this, this parade? And people are like, let's go egg the parade. And like, that's, that's kind of... The, the, Were people legitimately upset about it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It was great. Uh, I was one of them. Uh, <laughs> Ty, love you. Since I got to know you, you're a great guy. I try, I, yeah, I, I've grown up since then a little bit. Uh, but, a little bit. But, yeah, no, there's that thing. I come down, I start working at BYU. I've been here for... A little bit, almost eight years or a little over eight years. Who, who keeps track? You don't know. As long as the paycheck <laughs> keeps coming. Uh, but, I, Lauren, you were here. I didn't wear any BYU gear for the first three years I worked here. I couldn't do it. Uh-huh. I couldn't put anything that had the stretch Y on my body because that was blasphemy. That was going too far. 
And now, I mean, it took three years, and then I finally did it once. I'm like, oh, I didn't die. I'm okay. Okay, maybe we'll try it twice. <laughs> now my whole it closet's will... BYU gear, Lauren. I, well, like, I was I'm just, just going to say, when you start getting free stuff, well, I mean, yeah, that you does can't, it doesn't do matter it. what's on it. You can't turn down But I came to the realization, shirts? look, look the, the, the person signing my chip paycheck, not literally, but it says Brigham Young on there. So I guess, <laughs> and I've been here eight years. Uh, I guess I, I guess I'm a BYU fan now, but but no, there it was. It took me literally three years before I put a stretch Y piece of article of clothing on my body, and then when I started wearing it, my family disowned me, and now I'm an orphan. <laughs> Like literally, it got awkward a couple times at Thanksgiving when I showed up and I had like a BYU polo or a shirt or a hat on, and you let yourself wear the stretch Y. You're getting to know the athletes, the coaches. It's your job. Where where are your loyalties it's, now? Babe? I'm I'm different, Lauren. Um, if if you haven't figured that out by now, <laughs> I really don't have loyalties. Uh, I like I, I cheer for teams. I mean, I have my favorite teams. I'm I'm a diehard Oak, or Las Vegas Raider fan. Oakland. See, there you go. Uh, but outside of that, I cheer for good stories. And yeah. I, and right now, I'm employed by BYU. I guess I'm a mercenary that way. I cheer for good BYU <laughs> stories, uh, and, right. and sometimes, and, and sad but true, sometimes that comes through a loss. Sometimes the better story is when your team doesn't succeed. But, but win or lose, I always say this. I always say this to the, the student crew I work with. I go, win or lose, just give me a good story. That's what I want because that makes what we do as journalists easier, more compelling, more entertaining for you, the the audience. Is just give me a good story. But it's hard not. I mean, at BYU. I I didn't think I'd ever do it. Honestly, when I first came down here, I didn't think I'd ever do it. I I will I will come out and say it. I'm a BYU fan. I enjoy <laughs> I enjoy the, the the student athletes. I enjoy the coaches. I enjoy the people I work with. And if that makes me a fan, by all means, I, go Cougars. So when they're playing the Aggies, that that's got to be the only <laughs> game, right? That's got to be the only game where you're not cheering for the Cougars. I can tell you a story about that. Uh, a couple years ago, Matt Wells was still up in Logan. Um, I had a, I, I have a relationship with Coach Wells, know him, know him pretty well. Uh, the Aggies came down to Provo and beat uh, BYU. Sad day for Cougar Nation, I know. We had to do a BYU sports. Took the, na- we had took to- the wheel, took the old wagon wheel. Oh, yeah. Some tears, tears yeah. were shed. And, and so, so we had to do a BYU sports nation the following morning. And Utah State winning that game ruined my show. Because no player or coach wanted to come on after that. Frankly, no analyst wanted to come on and talk about it. So I'm like, what am I going to do for my show? And so I was talking to Coach Wells after the game, and I said, Coach, I'm torn. I go, is the, the Aggie fan of me says, nice job, Coach. But the BYU Sports Nation producer says, you really messed up my show tomorrow. And he looked at me, and, and he said, Ben, you go home and you enjoy this win and don't ever feel bad about it. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. But but yeah, it's just it it, it it's funny how it goes that way and sometimes it gets in the, no, no matter how professional you're trying to be like I don't know if this has ever come out on the air here with you and I, but I spent 15 years professionally covering the University of Utah. You as an Aggie Ute Cougar having ties to all three universities, like my allegiances aren't towards the team anymore, it's to the people. And right. I've covered and I've got to know some great people at every university. Kyle Whittingham, fantastic person. Mm-hmm. I got to know Kalani really well at the University of Utah before he came here because that's who I was covering at the time. And you get to know these individuals, and at that point it's hard not to cheer for them. You're not necessarily cheering right. for the, the, the uniform they wear. You're cheering for the person and the person you get to know and you have a relationship with. Absolutely, and I couldn't agree more. And that has a lot to do with our job because we do get to know a bunch of these athletes. I, I've met uh, Kyle Whittingham a few times. Really, really fantastic guy. My brother-in-law played for the University of Utah. I'm sorry, but I still rejoice when <laughs> BYU beats him. It's just, it's just in me. So, well, Warren, uh, I don't know if you remember this. Quick side story. You were part of this. I mean, uh, the, the one day at BYU Broadcasting where I felt unsafe, and I felt threatened, mm-hmm. I felt bullied, uh, I, I felt I, I was in a bad place that day. It was a Halloween. I didn't. I don't. I don't do dr- Halloween dress up. But you guys talked me into doing it, and I thought to myself, "Well, what's what's a good costume that I could take to BYU? That's kind of scary, yet entertaining and fun." And so I went into the closet and I dusted off my old Utah State Letterman's jacket, 
<laughs> and put on a Utah State ball cap and came to work. And it was right after Utah State beaten BYU. And yeah, everything. No, like, well, what are you dressed choice. up as? And I go, your worst nightmare. And I thought it was funny. <laughs> you guys hated me. Like, I, I literally, I, I felt like I had to go to the bathroom and change because you guys were <laughs> bullying me. I, you guys were throwing stuff at me. I, I had little notes on my office door. I'm like, Threats. whoa, the, you guys are supposed to be BYU Cougars. You're the higher standard here. Why am <laughs> I, I scared for my life here? Nope. One no of those regrets. notes I think was from you, Lauren, if I remember right. <laughs> Oh, my gosh. All of this is made up, by the way, folks, except for the fact that he did wear a Utah State Letterman's jacket. But, no, I mean, that wasn't our favorite thing, Ben. And if we did leave some some threatening content on your door, it was it was merited. It was merited. <laughs> All right. Tom Hone on Twitter said, attended grad school at the U, wore a BYU shirt every day that I attended except one. They would not take my photo for my student ID with me wearing a BYU shirt. <laughs> and he said, overall, it was a great experience. I thought that was so funny. So, Ben, you basically just did the same thing, though. I mean, you just you you just admitted that's exactly what you did. Yeah, but mine I was a Halloween costume. It fit, but apparently it just didn't go over well. I, I, had, a, <laughs> I, had, a, I had a a professor uh, at the at Utah State, and he'd wear BYU gear to class, <laughs> and, and that was always entertaining because because loved he, it. And I just sat there and laughed. I thought it was funny. Other guy, other people were a little bit. I nah, didn't think it was funny. Okay, now it's time to bring on someone who is living in the heart of Buckeye Nation, Columbus, Ohio, and has gotten a taste of the bitter Michigan-Ohio State rivalry firsthand, Katana Dolly. Thanks for coming on, KT. Of course. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to talk about the, the big game. Well, first of all, I have to say that KT is a phenomenal athlete, extremely good at basketball, and a wonderful quarterback uh, in flag football. And <laughs> well, I know this you, firsthand. <laughs> <laughs> All right, KT, you're, you're in Columbus going to Family Nurse Practitioner School. What was your first experience at Ohio State when you knew for a surety the rivalry ran deep through the natives' veins? What was your first experience? My first experience was these people are crazy diehard fans. Um, the game between Ohio State and Michigan is really more than just a college sports rival. It's one of the biggest rivals in all of sports. Um, it's called the game over there. And the hatred between Ohio State and Michigan runs very deep. The, um, to the extent that around school, around Ohio State and around Columbus, they will go around with red tape and put an X on every letter M in the city and on campus. So every sign, every building street names have red X's all over town. Um, And you actually can't even refer to the state as Michigan. It's always the state up north. Although I haven't been able to go to a game yet, the atmosphere in the city when Ohio State plays Michigan is unlike anything. You can hear the stadium for miles and miles. The stadium at Ohio State is called the Shoe. It fits over 102,000 people. Um, this is it's the fifth largest stadium in the world, not just the U.S., the world. And in Michigan, they have one hundred and seven thousand that fits in their stadium. So they're the third largest stadium in the world. And you can just imagine the atmosphere, two teams, just diehard rivals, a hundred thousand plus people screaming. Um, it's just it's an incredible atmosphere that is one of the most amazing sights to see in all sports. <laughs> So, KT, I, 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 there's a side story to the team The team up north. Uh, uh, that, there's a tie to the BYU-Utah rivalry there because Urban Meyer, who coached Ohio State, but after he coached at Utah, had ties to the uh, Ohio State program. And when he came and took over Utah, that's where the team down south came from because he took that from Michigan-Ohio State rivalry <laughs> to right. Utah. And now BYU became the team down south amongst Ute fans. But it, it, wow. it's, it, it's, it's so, so yeah, they're, they're, they're marry, marry the two rivalries together. But let me ask you this. Uh, think back to when you first got back to Columbus. And you got it amongst all those buck nuts, which is is what the fans call themselves there. When did you? What, what was your first experience when you looked around? Like, oh my gosh, these guys are insane. Well, really, it just. I think the biggest thing is just hearing everybody talk about Ohio State, um, the city of Columbus. There's not a professional sports team like some of these other big universities, so everything revolves around the college. Um, the the first 
experience was when we got there, I mentioned it as Ohio State and people said, no, 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 no. It's the <laughs> Ohio State University. Uppercase T on that. They t- take pride in full capitalizing the Ohio State. Um, you know, it's, it's just amazing to see the pride that people have in the university there. Um, and the, the rivalry specifically with Michigan is incredible. People will watch every game that Michigan plays during the year as if they're, they're trying to keep an eye on the enemy. So they know the strategy that the enemy is going to have when we play them. Um, it really is quite amazing to, to be a part of that atmosphere. And it's, it's really fun to see people just fully support um, a university. So you got your undergrad at BYU, but I know you've been converted a little bit into a Buckeye, at least part-time. So what's it like on that campus as far as school loyalty to the team goes? Campus is amazing. I mean, everybody is always keeping track with who the newest players, recruits are, um, who's coming on official visits, what their star ratings are, um, obviously all the clothing that people are repping all the time. Um <laughs> And people will pay big time to be able to be part of that atmosphere. Um, and I had mentioned before that I hadn't been to a game. And part of that is because the, the ticket prices that you can sell at Ohio State Michigan ticket for it are just amazing. So, for instance, the last game that they played, um, the average ticket between Michigan and Ohio State was over $900. Oh and the cheapest gosh. ticket that you can find is usually around $450. So what happens is Jeez. there will be students like myself that are saying, well, you know, I love Ohio State, Michigan, but I'm going to make some money off of this. So you buy a season ticket <laughs> and you sell the one game, you sell the ticket to the game and you can make some extra money that way. But <laughs> usually, even though there's a financial incentive, people want to be at the game. So they'll just keep their ticket and they'll be tailgating for days before and after <laughs> to uh, get ready for that, that big game and celebrate the wins. Cause Ohio state has a good record against the team up North right now. Yeah. It's been a while since that team up North actually beat Ohio state. And I, and knowing a couple of Buckeyes that they're quick to remind you of that. Uh, how about you? When you, when you tell people out in Columbus that hey, you're a BYU Cougar, what's the reaction you get from them? Well, first of all, a lot of people think, "Oh, it's okay. You can be fans of both teams because we don't play BYU." So I just have taken that and ran with it. I'll say, "Okay, you know what? I will be present watching the Ohio State games as long as I can watch my BYU Cougars play." Um, It is a challenge living in the East Coast, Eastern time zone. A lot of the times we're up until two o'clock in the morning watching the Cougars. And I have two little ones, but my husband and I sacrifice that time. We say we're up till two (laughs) o'clock watching those Cougars and we'll just be tired the next day. But we always support our Cougars. Yeah, good good news. The first three games next season, all 830 starts. (laughs) <laughs> yep, yep, good news for you <laughs> oh gosh we'll Gee. be prepared we'll nap before <laughs> oh my goodness being a mother of two that just sounds terrible to me all right kt thank you so much for taking the time i know you're super busy you're busy in school you're a busy mom but that was some awesome stuff thank you so much for coming on of course and go buckeyes and go coops <laughs> i love it up next what is it like growing up in kansas where the state is divided between purple and blue Casey Jones, a Wildcat, coming up on Cougar Tailgate. Welcome back to the Cougar Tailgate. I'm Lauren McLean. We got a peek inside the Ohio State-Michigan rivalry, and now we'll find out what charges the Big 12 battles between the Kansas State Wildcats and the Kansas University Jayhawks. It's time to welcome on K-State alum and diehard fan, Casey Jones. Thanks for coming on with me, Casey. Yeah, you bet. This is one of my favorite things to talk about. Kansas <laughs> State football. Kansas not, State in general. Yeah, Kansas State. Not, not Kansas, though, because that's one of the biggest rivalries in the country. So how did your diehard fandom begin? Oh, man. You know, I didn't grow up a 
any fan. We just were Kansas fans growing up. That's how uh-huh. you raise your kids in Kansas. You're just fans of Kansas. Like the, the state, state of Kansas? <laughs> yep. Wichita State, Kansas State, University okay. of Kansas. But it's really, uh, I went to, a, I decided I was going to Kansas State. And then I went to a camp called Wildcat Warm Up. Wow. Very nice. Yeah. Really nice uh, thing. And they, they really indoctrinated us into the traditions of, of Kansas State. And I think that's when it began. So do they, do they actually tell you to hate Kansas University? Is that part of the, the Wildcat Warm Up? Yeah, I don't remember them saying it out loud. It must have been, they must have played some sort of thing over the radio at night or something. But man, by the end of that camp, you bleed purple as it, you know, as they say. <laughs> Subliminal messages over, yeah, the, over the radio. It's serious. Hey, so since there are no professional teams in Kansas, how does that affect the rivalry? Oh man, it seems like, it seems like the college rivalry is just on a whole new level. Uh, like you camp out before the game. I mean, people camp a week early for these games, all the games, but the rivalry games for sure are just there. Uh, there's a lot of excitement for sure. So I can imagine. So, so here in Utah, the Utah jazz kind of is the one thing that can bring you fans and BYU fans together. Kansas doesn't really have that. So what, what's the division like between the state when it comes to the two universities? Man, so I I think the people, the alums really have the the deep rooted hatred for the other side. It seems like some people uh, are able to somehow I don't understand it, but somehow able to be a fan of all Kansas teams. But it's impossible once you uh, go to one of the <laughs> universities. I think. Yeah, that makes um, sense. Yeah. So you you mentioned that you had the Wildcat warm up. What are some of the other crazy stories or traditions that you know of surrounding the rivalry? Oh man. So, uh, this, this rivalry has been going on for a long time. It started in 1902, at least for football. And, uh, they, KU and K state. So they're kind of like Utah and BYU as far as distance. And so Mm -hmm. they have, they're only about an hour apart and only one highway. Um, I 70 is the only, is the road in between. And so, they're kind of close in proximity and, um, and it's just, it's a, it's an, they're easy to hate, you know? I mean, <laughs> we're just so close and you have to have those, those healthy, uh, that, that healthy hatred towards someone. And so, so we just decided to, to do that toward, toward the University of Kansas. <laughs> so if I remember right, you, you, you mentioned that there's a newspaper that refused to cover when Kansas University had a, had a big win. Is that right? So I remember this clear as day. So it's definitely scientific fact and the truth. <laughs> but um, when I was going to college, KU won the NCAA National Championship, the whole tournament. And I promise you, it was not in the local Manhattan, Kansas newspaper. We just, it was another day. No one was out partying. No one was in the streets. It was just a random day. As far as we were concerned in Manhattan, Kansas, the rest of the state is going nuts. Parties in the streets, but we just, it was another Tuesday. I don't know what day it was, but it was just another day. And (laughs) I don't even want to think about it. One of the funniest things. I remember it just so clear. It was so funny. So, well, now that some time has passed and you've lived in Utah for a while now, how do you feel about the rivalry? Has it changed at all or, or is the hatred still running deep with you? Oh man, I, I actually called one of my friends today that went to, to KU and I was like, do you still feel that in your soul, that hatred toward K-State? And she said, absolutely. I still to this day cannot wear purple. And uh, I thought that was really funny because that's kind of still how I feel. And I know the rivalries wrong are still going strong at the school because like even last year there was a big brawl during one of the during the they call it the sunflower showdown when K State and KU go head head to head uh-huh. and there was a big uh, brawl during the game last or in 2020 yeah that was last year 20, January 2020 and so I know it's still going strong for them but it's definitely still strong in my heart as well. (laughs) Isn't isn't that crazy? So someone told me on Twitter that uh, it was the Purdue and Iowa University uh, rivalry. 
and they were in school and there were these two teachers that were from opposite schools that it was like, wear your team sweatshirt day. And they started, they almost started duking it out like in school, the teachers, because that's how, <laughs> that's how crazy they were about their school and the, the loyalty that comes with it. It's such an interesting psychological thing, but so what's it like for you being a huge Kansas state fan in the heart of Cougar country? So, you know, it's so funny. I, we were talking about this the other day, but uh, it's so funny because BYU fans, the minute they hear you're a Kansas state fan, love to bring up the 97 cotton bowl BYU victory over Kansas state. And that's annoying every time someone brings it up, but I, you know, it's so funny because it's not the same kind of hatred as when someone brings up KU or set, or talks about their loyalty to KU. It's just not the same. It's so funny, but, but yeah, it is. That's one of the, that's a favorite of BYU fans to bring up and, you know, man, it was a clash of the Titans game. So whenever, sense. whenever somebody tells you where they go to school, you, your brain immediately goes to when did my school beat you? I feel Absolutely. like that's what, that's what yeah. every fan does. Right. Or, or I guess, when did they be, when did you play each other and what happened? That's where your, that's where your mind goes. If you're a sports fan. So Casey, can you cheer for BYU as well? Or does your wildcat fandom run just too deep? You know, it's yeah, I, I, I can cheer for BYU. It's funny. Cause when I don't tell anyone this, that, uh, but we would actually go to the BYU games when I went to Kansas state and cheer for BYU because they, it just felt like we had this kind of weird loyalty to BYU as well. Uh Um, but, uh, but anyway, don't tell anyone that that's that's (laughs) against everything I believe in, but as a, as a K stater in, in, in Utah, yeah, I don't have a problem cheering for BYU, but it's not the same allegiance. Absolutely. And, and it never will be. So <laughs> absolutely. And I, I wouldn't expect it to be Casey, <laughs> you, you are incredible. Keep cheering for your wildcats. Thank you so much for taking the time with me today. You bet. Thanks. All right, guys. And that does it for us today. Thanks again to KT Daly, Casey Jones, and Ben Bagley for coming on the show with me. You can join the Cougar tailgate virtually, of course, every Saturday at noon mountain time or download rate and review our podcast on Apple tune and Stitcher, Spotify, or on BYUradio.org. This is Cougar tailgate.